officially welcome to the start of the very first remote session of Nano Sims. We've never done this before. It's exciting and also a little strange, but um, we're here now and this is the world we live in. So yeah, um, okay. Well, uh, my name is Angela and I will be sort of the lead person, um, your main point of contact, the person that's been emailing you constantly um, for the past couple of weeks um, to sort of be your guide in learning nanoscience. Um, and so, and I also have two co-teachers who um, I'll let them introduce themselves in just a second, um, but Jenny and Karithika, you can probably see them on the screen, but they, they took um, their seasoned veterans of nanoscience. So they actually took the nanosense course last year um, in person and they did an amazing job implementing into their classrooms. So um, I brought them back as sort of your other guides. You know, they're very much stronger um, in, in teaching and pedagogy. So they can really support you on the other side of things, I think, because um, this is quite a mix of content um, and um, pedagogy because the content is sort of new. So we're trying to sort of support you in intermingling that into whatever curriculum is going on in your own classrooms and adapting that. Um, okay, so I think, <clears throat> let's see, let's see if this works. Okay, so um, the pre-survey, I think everyone did pretty successfully. So thank you so much. I just wanna make it clear, this is such a big piece when we are reporting our um, findings to NSF. That's how we get our funding. If we don't have this set of data, um, then we aren't able to get funded. So um, this is really a big piece of what we need. So you're gonna have a pre-survey, which you've already done, which again, thank you. Um, but at the end of the session, we are also going to do uh, a post survey. So ideally, you know, we see a change or some sort of inflection point of the beginning of the workshop and the end of the workshop. So just a reminder, it is going to happen again. Okay. So the community opener, we will sort of go around the room and do some introductions. Um, so what I was thinking is we're actually already going to start leveraging the, um, the breakout room so you guys can sort of get to know each other. Um, but before that, let me actually show you and introduce um, our nanoscience team. And then, I don't know, Bruce, did you want to step in here as well? Sure. Okay. Um, why don't, Bruce, yeah, why don't you go first? Okay, yeah. yeah, I'm Bruce Clemens. I'm a professor here at Stanford in material science and engineering. And I'm also the director of SNSF and am the current PI of the nano at Stanford NSF program. And um, uh, I just want uh, people who did this before, Ginny and Carithia, will recognize that I didn't do this last year. I should have. But I want to introduce myself so that you all can see who I am and um, offer to help in any way that I can. And not just during this, this uh, summer session, but if there's any time when you think it would be useful for me to participate in any activity that you're doing with your class, I want to offer to help. So um, I hope you know, Angela can give you my contact information. And if you're interested in it, I would really love to come and help uh, you guys in your classrooms or any other way. So I'm just offering that and introducing myself. And I would want to thank Angela and the team for putting this together under these trying circumstances when we have to do it remotely instead of all getting together and having uh, an experience that's a little bit different this year. So. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Um, okay, so I will I will go first really quickly. So uh, my name is Angela. Um, I am the Education Outreach Director of our Nano at Stanford, which is a collection of facilities um, that you will hopefully get to know and see um, over the course of the next few days. I've been at Stanford for about three years. Before that, I worked at a small nonprofit called iridescent, which is now called uh, technovation. And a large part of that was training scientists and engineers to become role models in um, primarily South Central LA, 
um, teaching kids about STEM concepts and things like that. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then before that, I uh, went to UCLA and uh, got my PhD in chemistry. So I studied um, designing uh, nanoparticles for drug delivery, which we will learn about uh, later later on. Um, and, but during that time, I realized as much as I love science, I didn't really like research. And that is where I really had an inflection point where I decided, okay, I don't want to do the research side. Um, I would really love to do more of the outreach side. So that's how I eventually sort of led my way into um, doing this. And I know um, there may be one or two people from LA or living in LA. I know that that is happening, but <clears throat> I worked with UCLA's uh, high school nanoscience program, which is really great. Um, and, and I highly recommend it if you are a teacher in the LA area. Um, okay, so I am going to now um, see if Jenny or Krithika wants to go first in introducing themselves. Whoever, whoever unmutes first. <laughs> oh, I was unmuting to say Krithika after you. <laughs> Oh. oh, do you really want me to go first? Okay. <laughs> oh, figured you and me. Um, so my name is Karitha Paul Bannon. I did um, nano at since, or nano since last year um, with, yeah, um, I am a fourth year teacher. I don't remember. I am within my first four, five years of teaching, um, but I thoroughly enjoyed doing the workshop last year um, and the uh, mini unit that I implemented was really well received by a lot of my students and was something that we've really anchored on throughout the year. So I'm really glad to be back and part of the workshop again. Oh, and I teach eighth grade science. Hi, my name is Jenny Thomas and I teach in Sacramento, actually Sutter Middle School. And I just finished my 25th year of teaching middle school and I've taught a lot of diverse populations. Um, I have a master's degree in education and, and a very strong background in pedagogy. And I taught the nanoscience curriculum a whole unit last school year, this last school year. Fortunately, the first half of the school year before we got kicked out of our classrooms. And it was an amazing experience. The kids loved it. They learned a lot. And I'm very appreciative of having been able to participate in this institute. And Krithika and I have been super fortunate and blessed to be able to come back and be supportive of the next group of teachers that's gonna learn the content and think about how to implement it in the classroom because it's extremely powerful. The kids got a lot out of it. We'll see how it goes. I know most of you were able to do the community opener and were able to do it on Google Classroom, but I'm gonna to try to sort of um, do it, see if your answers have changed, which is obviously totally okay. Let me, oh my goodness. I'll try to okay, stop my share and I'm going to put you guys into breakout rooms and hopefully you can um I'm going to do this manually All right. and then I think we have seven people okay here we go I'm just going down the line so please introduce yourselves to each other we're going to spend like five minutes um to do that all right I'm going to move you to here. Okay. So I think we have a group of three, but we're going to now open up all the rooms. Okay. So uh, we're going to spend about five minutes to um, talk to one another. And then what we'll do is then come back and just do a quick share. Okay. All right. I will see you in just a bit. Hello, oh, everyone. Welcome back. Okay, we're going to do a quick round robin of your groups, okay, and hopefully you guys can sort of introduce each other, uh, your partners can introduce each other, and then let's just go straight to the fun part, which is the, the content or the, the media consumption that you have, have had fun with this quarantine. Oh, it's Joanne's birthday! Happy birthday, Joanne! I'm sorry that... You're suspending it four hours with us. It's okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, happy birthday. Okay, does anyone wanna go first? A little quick 
group of, you know, where uh, your name, obviously, what grade you're teaching, your school, and then whatever um, fun thing that you learn from the other person. I'll go first. Okay, Vicki. Thank Hi, you. so I got to talk to Fiaz and Yannette, and they're actually both really close to where I live. One's in Lodi and one's in Stockton. So we're Hi. like really close. And we're talking about curriculum that we're using and um, just very two very nice people for sure. Um, but so you want us to talk about what we've been watching? Yeah, I'm the one that reading. Outlander. I've only been, oh yeah, Outlander. Okay, you mentioned yeah. that. I remember. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you guys. I am from I'm Modesto. I teach uh, STEAM and eighth grade science and actually now I applied for the math position so that's what I'll be teaching this year hopefully steam too depends on this whole coronavirus right of course okay anybody else want to go we're all gonna go so you know how this goes I can go I don't know okay. if everyone could see me if I just cut someone off um, but I uh, was partnered with Amy and Amy um, is in, uh, works at a school, I forget what it's called, but works at a school where student, where she's actually follows students through the grades and teaches all content areas, um, which is really impressive. Um, and is really interested in learning more about uh, different science topics to expose her students to uh, more science and nanotechnology uh, seemed to Amy to be a really good opportunity. Awesome. Okay, anybody else? And you know, your other partner can go too. All right, so I was with Dustin, I'm Amy. Okay. And um, so this was his first year teaching last year and um, he was actually um, a tour guide at the Grand Canyon and that's, um, which was, I think is very fun. Very cool. <laughs> I've never been to the Grand Canyon, I like, um, it would be nice to learn more about it. And um, and yeah, so he's got um, a, all kinds of experience, a, a degree in economics, and but he talked to some people and got into teaching and, um, and he's really happy about being a teacher and he teaches in Foster City. And um, yeah, so if you have any questions about the Grand Canyon or geology, you have to ask Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> Good, okay. All right, anybody else want to go? Yeah, so my name is Fiaz Shah. Yeah. I was partnered with Victoria and Annette, and glad that uh, Victoria has science credentials and math credentials. So I was telling her that we had two openings in our school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've been teaching for 21 years, and Samantha McCoy just sitting there. She is next to my classroom. We share the same workroom. Uh, her micro uh, microphone is off, so I don't know. Samantha, your microphone is off. Muted. Okay. Uh, I'm here. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, um, Yannette, she teaches in Stockton. And I, you know, I'm, I'm from Lorda. I mean, I'm with Lorda Unified School District, but we have schools in Stockton. So, Samantha and I, we teach uh, at uh, Krista McAuliffe Middle School in Stockton. Great. Thank you. Okay. And I will add. Um, yeah. That, that I'm a little bit different. I, I know I have the science credential, but I teach an elective and I'm just STEM all day long. That's very cool though. I think that's nice to have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else wanna go? Like uh, Julia or Portia, or I'm just you know scanning the Leo, anybody? Okay. I'll go. Okay, Usha. Uh, yeah, hi. I, I was partnered up with Portia and Portia teaches in Hayward, she's a science teacher in Hayward and she's been teaching for about seven years now. And so it was exciting to talk to her because I've never been to Hayward before. So, <laughs> nice. So we, and she told me it's a chill place, so maybe I'm gonna visit it soon. And we just discussed about distance learning, you know, how it was for each of us and, you know, mm -hmm. things just in general. And you wanna talk about, my, should I talk about myself too? Um, unless Portia wants to go, okay. no, yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Oh, I can go. Um, so okay. yeah, I, I talked with, uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to mess up anyone's name, but I talked with her and we were talking about, of course, um, distance learning and how um, 
you know, a lot of the, we were saying how a lot of the students from what we feel don't really want to go back to the classroom right now because they feel like they might get sick. And I also thought it was interesting that um, she's been teaching for a long time and she's been teaching like computer science, science, math, a lot of different subjects. So I thought that was like really cool. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? I can share. Okay. Um, my name is Anna and I was partnered with Amrit and Amrit is in Modesto, we both teach seventh grade science and an elective. Um, Amrit teaches a STEAM elective and I teach an anatomy elective and I'm in Los Angeles. Um, I just finished my first year of teaching and Amrit just finished her second year of teaching. So we talked about some of what the experience was like with distance learning and um, being newer teachers and how we're hoping to use this in our classrooms, but also are a little unsure of how how we'll do hands-on labs and um, the how, how we would do that via distance learning or if there's some kind of hybrid model um, yeah and we didn't we didn't talk about our tv show but maybe later <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you yeah that yeah I think we're gonna have a decent amount of talking to you about that too um anybody else want to go I know we have a few more couples to go okay I can go. oh or did I cut someone off no go ahead um so I was um Anna's partner and she pretty much said everything I was gonna say she just finished her first year so that's awesome yeah you you're made it year, in the most time <laughs> Um, and she's down south and is it near Burbank? Um, which, I mean, I'm in the Central Valley, so it's kind of far. Um, and yeah, so it was mostly just about um, how we're going to do labs. And But I will say, in terms of TV shows, is anybody else watching what we do in the shadows? Because... I love that show so much. I'll have to look it up. It looks interesting or it sounds like oh, vampires. Oh, okay. It's funny. <laughs> All right. I think um, who else are we missing? Maybe Le Leo, do you want to go? Sure, I'll take it. Okay. Um, so I was paired with June. Uh, he's over at Unity Middle School in East Oakland. Um, I myself. Uh, I'm in Mountain View. That's a very different population dynamic that I'm working with. Um, I started out in Oakland in the very beginning of my educational um, journey, if you will. Um, this will be my 10th year, in uh, sorry, my 11th year. So I just passed the decade mark, um, 11th year in teaching. Um, and then June there is um, in his fourth year of teaching, I believe, right? And so uh, we were both sharing the fact that we've taught a lot of um, actually similar subjects, um, the life sciences, biological, uh, and also that he did a bit of the physical sciences, which was something that I also had to branch into uh, when we were in uh, need of teachers uh, for the science. And so um, we kind of shared that. We also talked about like teacher burnout and also how we made it so far. Awesome, thank you. And then June, do you wanna, do you have anything to add to that? I think that was pretty much everything. Uh, one thing uh, cool that Leo mentioned was like he has some experience teaching overseas, like in Taiwan and like Singapore and China. So I just found that really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. I think we have maybe a few more people. Does anyone want to go? Julia? I'll go. Okay. okay. Um, I was paired up with Julia. She's, um, I'm at the same school as June in East Bay. Right. Um, going into my third year of teaching. Julia has been an, a science teacher for 20 years, which is incredible. Um, she's at Bay Point. Um, and we just talked about how we were both excited to learn about nanotech and we're I, w I was just mesmerized that she was in her 20th year of teaching, which is incredible. Okay, awesome. And then I'm just, sorry, I muted Julia for a second just because I thought there was some internet issues, but let me unmute her. 
Yeah, I think Yannette, did you want to share it all? I can I can share. Sure. Um, so I was part of the trio. If you remember Victoria, the very first person to go. So I was um, with Victoria, and then uh, I forgot how to say your name, Fios. Um, but Fios has been a teacher for like 21 years, which is also um, mind blowing. It's super cool to see someone who's been an educator that long. And then Victoria is also super cool. Um, I believe she was a classroom teacher for about 11 years, and then she was like an instructional coach for three. And I've heard it from her doing um, science classes, and then now she's moving into doing some math, and maybe she's going to keep doing STEM. Um, so they were just really neat people, and we all live, um, like they said, near Modesto, Lodi, Stockton area. So it's really neat. We got to talk a little bit about some of the curriculum that we're use using. We mentioned like Lify and TCI. Um, so yeah, and we didn't get to talk about our, like what we're currently watching or, or, or books or anything like that. We kind of ran out of time, but okay. great people. Thank you. All right. So, okay. All right. Let me share my screen again. But, um, the whole reason why we're here is, uh, to inspire thousands of middle school students to learn about nanoscience by focusing on the following, um, Teacher professional development, that's why you're here. That's why you're always trying to improve yourself. I applaud you for that. Um, and obviously the basis here is to learn about nanotechnology and its applications. Um, and you're gonna interact with some scientists. You met Bruce this morning and you'll meet a few other um, scientists and engineers throughout the, the sessions. Um, and observe and the lab tours. So uh, I actually have a cool um, feature where we can tap into some of the cameras inside of the clean rooms and the labs. And so you'll get a sort of peek into what's going on. Obviously, typically we would have you actually come and walk around and even, you know, maybe go inside of the labs and things, but not this time, obviously. Um, but the thing is, I think, you know, depending on our situation in the next couple of months, I would love to have you guys come if you have a field trip. Jenny was actually going to bring her entire middle school um, eighth grade class that was like 150 kids to our classroom or to our campus and it, it didn't really work out because it's just as things were shutting down but um, I just want to say I want to make it clear that you are always welcome to come back on campus when it's obviously safe too um, and then yeah going to uh, applic uh, application to classroom practice that's a big part of why Karithika and Jenny are here um, so you guys got a nice little package for nanoscience lessons and activities. We're gonna do them together. Um, we're gonna see how it goes. Uh, and yeah, uh, obviously, and we wanna help you, guide you into creating lesson plans that are NGSS consistent. Um, a big part, uh, and we, with the lesson planning part, I think that's where obviously Kritika and Jenny will really shine. Um, and I also know that you know some of you are coming from schools with prerequisites on particular lesson plans or lesson plan design. So um, we have sort of a loose template for you, but obviously if you have your own template, please feel free to use that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, throughout the day. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think this will probably be one of the hardest things for us um, at the end of the day is sort of building that community, you know? Um, I mean, I obviously, uh, I'm the first one to say that I have struggled with dealing with everyone online. I'm sure you have obviously um, with trying to create a community or create a classroom community um, as you have sort of been thrown into transitioning into remote teaching. So um, I think that is something that I would like to push for, um, but I know that, you know, it's, it's very difficult. So as long as we're all here and together, that's all I really care about. So, um, and then continue, continued support. So the big thing, Okay, and then um, obviously continued support. So um, I think this is going to be something that is a little bit flexible, but um, we would really love to figure out a way to support you remotely. Um, that could be, you know, a few check-ins, some off open office hours, um, and that's something that sort of we can brainstorm. We have the, obviously the flexibility, especially now, to do that um, since everyone is remote and things like that. So. Um, typically, we do a fall in-person session on a Saturday, 
um, which may happen still. I don't know. But um, again, since everything is up in the air, that's why I'm sort of leaving it open ended. To achieve all these things, we are going to, over the next four days, including today, provide you an understanding in the field of nanotechnology and a lesson that you can implement into your classroom. Okay, so our storyline, so a big part, I think, with uh, teaching nanoscience is weaving this nanoscience thread into your current curriculum. Each day is sort of dedicated to a, a theme. Okay, so day one today is what is nanotechnology? I think everyone is sort of coming in with a pretty blank slate, or at least hopefully somewhat blank slate, um, that's why you're here to learn, uh, is to figure out what exactly nanotechnology is. Um, and then the next day we'll talk a sort of more about, you know, how are nanomaterials made? How do we actually um, manipulate matter to be so small? Um, and then, and then how do we see and characterize nanomaterials? And then finally, um, and some of this is on you, <laughs> is what will a lesson plan look like in your classroom? And that's going to really be, um, you know, I know also contingent on what school will look like in the future, because I think everything is quite a bit unknown. Um, but that's, th these are our lofty goals, okay? Um, and another thing I wanted to mention was adapting to distance learning. So there's a lot of fun features, I think, on Zoom. Part of it is that I'm still learning about as well, but like the, uh, the breakout rooms, I know you can do some reactions like clapping and thumbs up and thumbs down and things like that. So feel free to do that. Um, also, um, uh, feel free to put things into the chat or just speak up. Um, I don't bite. I literally can't bite you even if I wanted to, but um, I just want to make it clear this can be a dialogue. I don't always want to be the one that's up in the room talking. You know, I would love to have it be a discussion, um, have fun with this as much as we can. Um, and then I, uh, for just administrative purposes, we are going to assign homework. I use the term homework loosely because I know, you know, you guys are in the middle of summer. You probably don't actually want to do homework, but um, part of it is because um, a lot of the stuff that we'd be doing in person, um, we would give you a work time, we would give you more classroom time. Um, and then another thing is the homework and actually another uh, teacher or another educator um, or colleague actually um, ran this program before me uh, and they had some awesome footage and video with um, people doing some of the experiments uh, at home or repeating them and double checking them with some of their kids or their pets. Um, so I would really like to encourage that, like feel free to involve your kids or whoever is living with you. Um, I have a dog, I get her involved. She tries to eat pieces of the kits, but I have since stopped her. Um, and uh, another thing is while you're actually doing the activities, um, you can record them. Obviously we're recording this, but I can, uh, what I'll, I'm hoping to do is sort of use my phone to record some of the stuff to then post for you guys as well, but obviously you can do it as um, Also, I'll be holding sort of office hours over the lunch break too, so I'll be online. You guys can sign out and sign back in. You know, you have that hour and a half to yourself, but if you have any questions or concerns, I'll stay online um, to, to chat or be available to chat. Um, and then, I think um, you guys feel free to share any adaptations. Uh, you know, you've been through the gauntlet when it comes to uh, learning how to do remote learning, uh, distance learning. So um, feel free to sort of tell me what's working, what isn't working. And then, yeah, because um, I hopefully be a little patient with us or with me in particular, because I am sort of learning also on the go on how to adapt to distance learning. Um, and again, I want this to be something where if you have any sort of constructive criticism, feel free to tell me. I would be happy to listen. Um, I'm, again, learning as we go along as well. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we're going to shift gears a little bit, and we're actually going to do an activity. So you guys were given those kits, and you're going to do um, a particular activity. So you're going to be the student now. Okay, we're gonna do a thing called how big is it? Okay, so we're gonna to try to figure out, oopsies, so we are going to figure out how big is it? So you're gonna to wanna to go get your little cards. 
Um, hopefully they're nearby, but there's that little set of cards that were set, um, were in your little plastic container. They're over here, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend a few minutes. You're gonna, what the whole goal is to figure out <clears throat> the size and scale using the metric system. So you have two sets. One is the objects over here on the left and the, um, the scientific notation on the right side. So you'll have two sets. I think they should be separated out. So you'll separate them out, all right? And then what we're gonna do is we're going to get into groups. So, so we're gonna spend like, let's say 10 minutes doing this. Okay, so what we'll do is spend about 10 minutes for you. And then I would, my best recommendation to you for the remote modification is just pick one person to play with the cards or play with one set of the cards at a time and then you guys can co-arrange and then either I would recommend maybe taking a picture I don't know so we're gonna this will be something we're gonna figure out so I'm gonna set you into some breakout rooms hold on I'm gonna stop my share and do the breakout rooms okay um all right let's move these around we're gonna move you to breakout room one all right, so we're gonna set this up where you're gonna spend about 10 minutes or so, and maybe you guys already got started, but um, uh, organizing your cards, okay? And I will hopefully be popping in and out. Okay, so you guys can take a look at what my screen looks like too. Okay. I'm missing some. Okay. Angela, we were having fun and you brought us back. I know, <laughs> I'm rooting. <laughs> so is it okay if only one of us took a picture? Yeah, that's totally that's fine. Nice. It's just for um, you guys to sort of um, keep an uh, keep a idea. Okay. So let me present my screen. So I'm sorry for ruining all the fun, but um, we have to get back to work. <laughs> for the sake of time, we are not going to do this because I think we're running much slower than I had anticipated, but that's okay. Um, so I would recommend, if, and this is an option, we don't actually have to do it, but um, you could take a screenshot or take a picture. And then if you could, you could actually make it your virtual background. That's what I've seen people do, which is kind of cool. Um, like they'll, uh, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. If you change the virtual background here, you can, I did not take a picture, but um, you can, let me see, like, do you see this? Okay. It's not working today. All right, it's not happy with me. Anyway, you can change your virtual background and actually, oh wait, it is showing. So like, for example, mine is the office. Okay, so, but um, that's what I've seen people do in meetings is if they wanna say this and like point it out and say, oh, well, this is like where Stanley sits, you know? Um, but it could be a fun example of that. Um, all right. So does anyone uh, want to share any interesting um, things that they uh, noticed 
or, you know, had to discuss and say, oh, I don't know, or disagreements. Feel free to share. Uh, we were discussing about the height of a typical pro basketball player because it really didn't fit. In the, okay, okay. Like, it was like one that was way too short for a human being and then way too tall for a human being. Okay. <laughs> like, no okay. human being is 10 meters. <laughs> no, okay. So, yeah, that's the tricky thing is I, which I maybe should have told you, is that um, actually for the for the the cards they don't actually they won't actually fit a proper one-to-one -one ratio so that is what is sort of tricky or was done purpose to trick you um to make it a little difficult so um ideally and i'll show you what i did here is you know use i usually lay out and this is only one way uh you lay out all the numbers like this can you see right and then you can sort of put them in between or just like around the same area sort of thing. Um, what what did people say was the smallest thing? And feel free to do it, put it in the chat too. Oh, this thing, okay. The diameter of a cesium atom, I see Vicky's holding it up, okay, all right. Anything else, anything smaller? No, everyone's pretty much in agreement. Oh, nice. Oh, Samantha, that looks good. If you guys can look at Samantha, she actually made it her background. Very cool. Well done. Somebody is way more technology savvy than me. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Any other comments on this one? Anybody? Don't be shy. We didn't get I, I just want to say the oh yeah the going to the positive side was easier than the negative. Okay, like the large stuff. But that's probably because you know you guys are used to it, right? Everything that is sort of 10 meters and above is something that you have dealt with in your daily life. But when you go smaller, it's sort of hard to imagine. It's quite abstract, right? Anybody experienced that? Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. So um, another thing is, here are the answers. Okay. So the smallest is actually, oh, the, did anyone see the width of the water molecule? Is it not here? I don't have it here. Did anyone see it? So these are the answers. And actually, if you go to your classroom stream, the answers are posted on the, um, the activity, or. Er, the activity is posted in the, the materials of day one. If you actually want to look at it on your, on a actual Google document, just FYI. I know there's a lot of screens to play around with, but that's just FYI. Okay. And I think one of the largest things was actually a distance a car can travel. We don't have a lot of these cards. So we're having to kind of um, go Let's through. Okay. Yeah, I think some of them are missing. Oops. Yeah, you're right. I think some of them are missing. So height of Mount Everest. So I think for this one, it should be, yeah, I think we're missing some slide or cards for some reason. I don't know what happened, but I think the the highest is the, the official start of uh, outer space. And then the smallest is the diameter of cesium atoms. So that is the, the span. And that is from 10 to the fifth. So a hundred kilometers or one, angstrom which is 10 to the negative 10 meters and then something that is about one nanometer is uh, more like the width of the transistor this is sort of the function the size that we're actually working with is the transistor so transistor is actually usually in a lot of your devices your phone devices and things like that okay so yeah i'm sorry i think something got misprinted and some of them are missing. I think I'm really, yeah. Well, that's okay. It makes it less confusing to be honest with you. Okay, all right. Were there any things um, at the more on the small scale like a single bit on a DVD? What did you think that size was? So that's two, it's about two to the negative seven meters. So that's what, a few hundred micrometers. 
right? Yes. Oh, or the length of an amoeba is, oops. Length of an amoeba is 10 to the negative fourth, right? Okay. All right. Any other things? Any other questions, comments on this one? I think there's two examples for every scale. There might be two yeah. cards. We just have one of the sets. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what happened. I think, sorry, when I printed it, I think I misprinted and only printed one of the pages. <sighs> but um, anyway, the whole principle of this is to really sort of figure out the order of the science, the scientific notation, right? And this is pretty straightforward, right? You're going from the largest scale to the smallest scale. So 10 to the fifth to the 10 to the negative 10, right? And then what you're trying to do is that is quite an abstract mathematical thing, right? And then what we're doing here on the other side is to try to sort of normalize that information um, with objects that are ideally daily objects that you see Obviously, this is a little bit outdated, like no one uses a DVD anymore. So um, you can always change that. Um, but I think some nice guiding questions when you're in the classroom or when you're somewhere, we were thinking about figuring out a digital way to do this. Um, but I talked to a software developer, my friend, who was like, this is nearly impossible. <laughs> Good luck. So um, but anyway. Um, what I think is really nice are these guiding questions on how did you decide on the order? And some people in our experience has been sort of relative. Oh, what do I know about this? Or how many, how many, you know, pieces of wool would fit into a wedding ring or something like that. So um, trying to figure out in a scaling way or just figure out, um, or even just guessing. Um, and, um, and typically we would do this where we would sit and we would walk around the groups um, and actually look at who arranged or how they arranged things. Um, so I thought that was really good. But um, I guess maybe Kritika and or Jenny, I don't know if you wanna mention, uh, you know, how you use this in the classroom at all. But the biggest thing is just to sort of understand what realm of, size that we're talking about, the realm of sizes that we're thinking about. Go ahead, Jenny. Yeah, I was just going to say in, in using this in the classroom, there are a lot of cards. Um, as you guys were just discussing, this is only half the cards. And so what I found is that giving it straight to, to my students anyway was a little bit overwhelming. So I started with an activity that had fewer cards and was easier to align in order and arrange in order. And then I gave them this as a step up activity. Um, I also provided them with a ruler and a meter stick because for some of them, they're not even familiar with some of the units. And that was helpful for them to have a meter stick on their table. Um, and so just thinking about some of those things, I also have a slide up on the screen that kind of shows them what I mean, like putting, putting the measurements in order, like a, like as a, as a, a measurement stick and then basically arranging the pictures. And obviously that's when you're able to be in a classroom and have the kids sit around a table and be able to work on it. Um, but we'll, as a team, I'm sure we'll discuss different ideas for how to adapt that or what we can do if we end up in some kind of a hybrid model uh, moving forward. So I, I have seen matching games on Nearpod, not saying that I'm like good at it or anything, but maybe that's something we can look at to see, because I've seen them um, have it so that the kids could match the picture with the definition. And I feel like that's what we did. So we could look into that. And I think it's, um, it's a good idea to look in the chat. Um, it looks like Leo and Jun um, oh, sorry. linked some uh, activities that you can use that would be good remote learning opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. Scale of the universe and then H2. Yes, this, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you for monitoring that. Because actually, um, okay, well, before we get to that, I want to also talk about sort of the size and scale of what we are talking about. And then we'll go back. What I want to go back was the actual, this thing here. So I really like this um, graphic. It's also a free graphic to use, but um, it really showcases what we're talking about. So when it comes to nanoscience, we're actually talking about the size and scale between here. 
So 10 nanometers and 100 nanometers. That is the size we're talking about right here. Let me see, do I have my pointer? Here we go, right here. So it's, so the biggest thing that's on here is human hair, which you guys can like feel your hair and say, oh wow, you know, it's quite small or fairly small or fairly thin. And that's about 100 microns, okay? So that's 10 to the negative six, 100 microns. Oops, I'm dropping things. But 10 to the negative six. But when we get smaller and smaller, we are made up of billions of cells. So that's sort of the animal cells here. So those are about a few tens of microns, so or or less. Um, and then going lower, going lower and lower, we have things like that make up the cells, which are like um, parts of genes, your DNA that's here, or sections of your DNA. But those things are actually the same size or similar sizes to. Um, man-made objects like transistors. Transistors are actually a big part of computers um, that go inside of many of your devices um, or even types of nanoparticles. Um, and then again, that is sort of analogous to things that are inside of your cells like ribosomes or parts of proteins and things like that. And then once you get really tiny, you'll just go down to atoms. And obviously there's things smaller than that, but um, that's sort of the scale that we're looking at is just right in between. It's kind of like this Goldilocks um, size where it's bigger than an atom, but smaller than a cell. So another way to describe what a nanometer is, these are some fun facts for you guys to take away, but a fingernail grows about one nanometer every second, right? So your fingers, you cut your fingernails or, you know, play around with them. I cut them probably, I keep them really short once every week once every two weeks probably, but they grow actually every second. So, and your hair is actually growing at around the same rate as well. Um, and uh, your human hair is again, a, about 80 to 100,000 nanometers wide. Uh, one strand of human DNA is about two and a half nanometers in diameter. So that's inside of your cell nucleus is your DNA and it's that small. Um, and I think another fun, interesting one is if a seagull landed on an aircraft carrier, it would sink by one nanometer. So think of a, imagine, I guess, an aircraft carrier that carries planes, which I think is crazy. Um, but if a seagull landed on it, it's such a small weight, but it would, it would actually, you know, sink the aircraft carrier just by one nanometer. Okay. So these are just some interesting ways to think about what, how small something is, or how small a nanometer is. Um, and then, yeah, so June already put um, something in the chat for us, but um, let me see if I can uh, share it with you as well here. So here, there are two examples that I really have liked using um, that are better way maybe to do something remotely, where you are playing around with basically um, the size and scale of things, but in a digital way. So over here, you have something where um, you can keep clicking and clicking. Oh, this noise is not great. Um, but you can keep clicking and seeing size and scale of objects. And this is in particular more bio-related. Um, and keep going and keep going. And you can get down to one of the smaller viruses that exist. Okay. Um, and then over here, I really like this one as well. Um, I think it's really beautiful as well. They, they did a really good job. Let me see if I can mute the music. Um, but you can take a look at things that are really big and really small. Um, and so you can, it's, it kind of gives you a headache, but you can get really, really small. Like, oh, how big is a grain of sand? So it's about 500 micrometers. Um, what is the largest bacteria? Oh, what is this pollen, the duckweed? Oops. Um, amoeba, right? We were talking about that. So the amoeba is about 350 micrometers. Let's go smaller. Oh, thickness of paper, 150 micrometers. All right, let's keep going. Okay, smallest object naked to the visible eye. You might want to remember this is about 100 micrometers. All right, let's keep going. Um, Cell nucleus, right, that has the DNA inside is about seven microns, right? Let's keep going. Uh, let's see what the nanometer. Okay. Different, oh, the transistors, so about 25 nanometers. That keeps changing, actually, so that's why it makes it hard. 
All right. Oh, DNA. Here we go. About three nanometers, right? So we said two and a half, three, we're just rounding um, and things like that. Um, so, oh, and then here's the cesium atom, right? One of the smallest things. And then you can keep going, which I think is crazy with this one. You can keep going to, um, let's see, let's get these quarks, which are parts of atoms. I don't even know what, uh, what these are. Yuck, yuck-o-meter. Oh my goodness. Okay, what's this? Uh, neutrino, right? All right. Oh my God, where's the end? Oh, Planck length, wow, we're really doing that, okay. Oh, quantum foam, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> anyway, I just wanna make it clear that this has a whole huge scope of um, possibilities. You know, you can have kids look things up or pick a few things at different scales and play around with them. Um, and report back and share that information. So it goes so big too. I love this thing because it's so cool. Um, and you can get all the way, I think, to multiple galaxies, clusters, Jesus. Yeah, so it is crazy, um, but in the best way possible, I think. Um, okay, all right, let me switch back to our presentation. And we're actually gonna take maybe, like a two minute stretch break, if you guys don't mind, because we are running a little short on time and I have a few more slides that I need to get through. 